Okay, so we're going to fire up the Nebraska boiler. And this is, behind me here is the burner management panel. Okay, this is the graphical display that we're going to look at. And then we we'll move further out, you see all the control buttons that are sitting down here. And what we've got to do is uh, actually go over, first of all, and turn the gas on. The main gas is currently shut off. So I'm going to go over there and do that first. I'm up at the far end of the gas train right now, and I'm going to go to the main gas valve, this guy here. And we have a key which is located in the Nebraska control room. Basically unlock it. Open up the main gas cock. The gas will come down. This line here. Go through that regulator. Come through another flow meter. Uh, for monitoring purposes, comes back around on this gas line here through this turbine flow meter, which is used for our flow control. And then the gas line will come around this corner down, and then it's going to go this way. So it's heading towards the boiler. This is the one of the safety shutoff valves. This is the upstream valve. Hard to see, but back in here is the vent valve, and then this is the downstream shutoff valve. So the double block and bleed. Then we go to the control valve, which is going to control the flow of the gas. From there, it comes up long into the gas ring itself, and from there into the boiler. Okay, so we're at the burner management panel right now. You can see that there is no mode selected. There are alarms all over the place right now, and so we have to go through a complete startup procedure. The very first thing it wants to know is what fuel are you firing? So if we bring the camera back out a bit. You'll see the control panel down here, and there's the fuel selector switch. It's a spring return switch, so you actually have to hold it over in the gas position and then release it. Um, or the oil position and then release it, but it, you need to hold it at least a couple of seconds so they can scan that, that that's what you selected. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into EMS permissives. And up in here it's telling me that the general permissives are okay. That's all of these, so we got water in the boiler, all the conditions that it want are basically met. Um, then I want to look at natural gas permissives, and it says that my gas pressure is okay, and that's because of the fact that I opened up the gas valve. And now it's coming along and it's telling me on this line down here, number one burner is inserted, so it knows which burner is in. We have two different burners. It knows now that natural gas has been selected. That's what I did with that spring load switch. Now the next thing it wants to do is it says the master trip relay is not ready to start. Well, first of all, I don't have a mode selected, so I gotta look here at mode selection, and we're gonna run number one burner with natural gas with up to 10% flue gas recirculation in here. So that's this mode here. The moment I touch that, this little box here filled in yellow. And that little box in there is now telling me that we are selected to natural gas plus 10% FGR mode. Okay. So now the next thing that it wants says that um, the operator needs to reset all alarms. So I'm going to go down onto the panel and I'm going to push the alarm acknowledge button. And the moment that I did that up here on the panel, it says the master trip relay reset is now permitted because I've acknowledged all alarms. So now I'm going to go back down to the panel and along to the master trip fuel relay reset. I'm going to reset that. And now you'll see that this line has progressed across. The master trip relay is okay now. And now it's telling me the burner is ready to start. The instruction to the operator is that the operator is to depress the start button. To basically start the boiler up. So if you look back down to the panel here, I've got a burner stop button and I got a burner start button. So I'm going to push the burner start button and immediately the boiler is now going to high fire position. It's got to open up the air damper 
and the flue gas recirculation damper to make sure it's purged. So right now you saw it's it's got uh, FGR damper has found no proven position because the dampers are currently opening and the combustion air is no proven position. Once those dampers come up and hit their end switches, which they just did, the purge started. And the purge is uh, running for 180 seconds. So we've got a fair amount of time now to go through this whole purge sequence. What I, I right now I've seen all the individual permissives. What I want to do is to go to a boiler overview mode. And in the boiler overview mode, it's now telling me that the purge is in progress and that those dampers are wide open and the minimum purge flow is okay. And basically this is the screen we're gonna typically operate from. I've still got 123 seconds to go through the purge. At the end of purge, it's gonna come down to low fire. And we'll start the video again just as we hit the end of purge. So now you can see the timer's timing down. We're four seconds, three, two, one. And immediately it moves to a different mode. It's now bringing the boiler down to low fire position or the light off position. It's going to close the dampers. It's going to check to make sure that the gas valve is in the right position. Currently the dampers have moved to unknown position because they're traveling from high down to low. And the gas valve is in the low fire position. It's okay. Okay, combustion air hit blue gas hit and immediately it jumped from about a hundred seconds down to five seconds. It's now trying for pilot. You see the pilot gals went green. The scanners, those two green lights are seeing it. They're seeing the, the pilot plane stabilizing now for three seconds, two seconds, one second. And now it's going to trial, trial for main plane. It's actually opening the SSBs. You see the green on the uh, red on the outside to start and now they've gone green. That's when the position of them actually hit their end of travel switches. And so now we got main flame on it shut the pilot off and we are starting to warm the boiler up. Okay so we have sight ports all the way down or three of them down the side of the boiler and they need to have purge air on them. Right now there's no air and in fact you can't see it but they're foggy. And I, what I want to do is get some purge air going. So if I go down to the end of the boiler. And because I'm so short, there's no way I would reach that. I've now turned that air on. And that air is being supplied to the three ports on that side and the three back ports in here. The actual main flame, and I don't know whether you could see this on the video, but there's the flame. And that's taken from the from the center port, very small. You go back to the side port at the front. So that flame is taken at a low fire condition. This is uh, uh, just barely lit off, about 8% open on the gas valve. There'll be nothing on the next one because the flame is so small. And obviously nothing on the third one. Once we get up to high fire later on, this thing will have a flame all the way from one end to the other. The flame is shaped such that the flame will not hit the end walls and it will not hit the side walls. We do a bunch of characterizing with the burner tips themselves, the actual spuds to flame shape. They call it a length over diameter ratio. Okay, let's go over the feed water valve. Okay, now we're at the feed water valve and these valves, we isolate both the up and downstream block valves because we keep our feed water running 24 hours a day. Uh, to keep the deaerator warm and uh, as a result we would get some leakage through the automatic valve. It will never shut off tight. So we keep these valves closed and they are tough to open. And then you make sure you don't backseat the valve. So back about a quarter turn. Must have water going through there. 
going to go to the control panel and close this control valve. For some reason, when it was last operated, the operator did not close this control valve, and the valve is sitting manually at 3% open. So I'm going to click on the controller, click on the output, and enter a value of zero, and then hit the enter key, and you can see that the valve went to zero. So now we'll go back to the back of the boiler and open up the downstream valve. So now that we know that the control valve is closed, we're going to open up the downstream block valve. And now I can't hear any water going through there, which is what, what alerted me to the fact that something wasn't quite right. Now you'll see that the, the main flame is in, but the indication here for the operator is that we're in a low fire hold mode. The reason for that is that the stack temperature, which is measured by a thermocouple up at the top, not indicated on here, um, is too low. And so we would have water, condensed water, that's going up the, up the stack. And you know, when you start a car, you look at the exhaust and you see, that when you first get going, that there's clouds of vapor coming out. Well, that's exactly what we've got right now. And because we've got flue gas recirculation, those flue gases would come around and go into the burner and they are corrosive they've got acids in them uh, so we don't want that in the burner secondly they would fog up the scanners and we would lose the main or we would lose flame indication and then it would shut us right back down again so this will not release until you're up to 105 degrees c that guarantees then that the gases are hot enough that the vapor will stay in, in a non-cloud form so we're down right now at our low fire light off position and you can see that the oxygen level in the flue gases is only running at 7.6 degree uh, percent. Um, the uh, inlet temperature, the air coming in was 97 degrees, the outlet temperature is running at 215 and it's measuring the temperature difference. It can then calculate the efficiency and it's not particularly efficient at this point in time. Our combustibles are down at zero. This boiler actually runs very clean. But if we got a picture of this just at light off, we would have seen some combustibles there and then they would disappear once we get the fire going. If the O2 was higher, if we had more air going through there, it would quench the fire. So if that was up at eight and a half, nine percent, we would all of a sudden get combustibles appearing and that would be unburnt fuel uncombusted natural gas is actually going up the stack and being measured as combustible. There you can see right now it just picked up 7 ppm, 5 ppm, it bounced up to 8. So it's kind of on a bit of a threshold. As soon as that O2 comes down to 3 or 4%, there will be no combustibles in there. Okay? Okay, so to open the non-return valve, or what is sometimes called a stop and check valve, it's up on the top of the boiler. And I need to go up this stairwell, it's kind of a ship's ladder. It's very steep. You can fall very easily off of it, so you have to use your hands. Okay? Okay, so up here we're on the top of the steam drum. You can actually see over there the two safety valves. So the two safety valves over here are set at slightly different pressures. The small one is set at 300 PSI, the larger one is set at 305 PSI. Then this green handle valve over here is the non-return valve. Basically it's a flat plate on a seat, and then when you loosen this valve up, it allows the plate to float upwards. So I'm going to open it up. Hear a little bit of steam coming through now. And, uh, take it off so that it's not back seated. Okay, we're going back down the stairs. You should go down backwards. Put your hands on the rails. If you heard at the end of that part of the video clip that we were doing, you could hear a rattling or banging, and that's the flat plate 
coming off the seat and falling back on the seat, coming off the seat, falling back on the seat. Because there is no steam flow, the line over my head is long, goes over down into the high pressure header and the valve is closed, so it's dead ended. What we're going to do in a little while is there's a bypass valve around here that we will open up to slowly warm the headers. And then from there, the steam goes out of the 1725 header over to the 150 pound header or the 1035 kilopascal header um, further back from us and then through the system. Okay, we've got a flame in the boiler right now, starting to warm up. It's up at about 50 PSI. And what I need to do now is to close off the steam coming from the electric boilers upstairs. We have hot standby coils that are actually here, and the return coil is over here. It's just a pipe that goes into the drum and comes back around, and uh, steam from our electric boilers is going through there, keeping this boiler actually warm. Now, valve is awkward to work with because it's so close in proximity and it's very hot because of the fact that somebody decided to insulate the stem of the valve coming up and so there's no heat losses. Now the next thing we need to do is to open up our continuous blow down system. So water is taken from the boiler drum and it comes down through this valve. And there's actually at the end of the line, there's a sensor right there, which is measuring the conductivity of that water to basically tell us um, how much chemicals are actually in it. So I'm gonna open up these two valves. It's a sample cycle system where this valve opens up once every 30 minutes for one minute. During that time, it will measure the conductivity of the, of the uh, water in the boiler drum. And this water is going to the blow down tank in the basement. The conductivity shows up on this blow down controller and the blow down controller will hold that valve open for one minute. If the conductivity is above the set point value, the valve stays open. If the conductivity is below the set point value, the valve closes. And if the conductivity is very low, you'll actually get alarms that are coming up on here. The reason it's low right now, part of the reason is the water sample is cold. Once the water sample comes up, then it'll, it'll, it'll basically come up in its conductivity. Okay. Okay, we need to get water from the hot well upstairs into the deaerator. So that, we can either use condensate pump number two or condensate pump number one. I'm gonna go on condensate pump number one today. This is the suction valve. feed water pump. Number three feed water pump is running constant speed with letdown control so it's, it's taking excess pressure and dropping it back into the deaerator. Normally we will run on number two feed water pump which is running on a variable frequency drive which is located right over here behind it. So we actually control the speed of the pump 
maintain the feed water pressure at the desired pressure. Well, up here on the mezzanine deck, which is just up above the control room roof, we've got a deaerator, and then the next vessel over is a hot well. So all the condensate comes back to the hot well. We pump the condensate from the hot well to the deaerator. In the deaerator, the water from the hot well is pushed through that spray. And there was an earlier video that you may have seen which actually showed the inside of this vessel and how it actually sprays in there. We need to provide fresh water makeup to both vessels in case they require it, in case there isn't enough condensate coming back. So this is the fresh water makeup valve for the hot well. And this is the hot well here. Okay, you can see right now its level is down there. Deaerator, which is this vessel here, we actually control the level from about there downward. Um, the level is only in the bottom half. The upper half is always left empty so that the proper spray action will be achieved out of the spray nozzle. out of the deaerator actually comes out through that big valve down there and then down through the feed water pump. Okay we're gonna get ready to start taking steam to the load condenser which is this number one load condenser down here um, and uh, it's got a valve at 12 percent but there's nothing going into it so I'm gonna start up that coolant pump so I get a startup display over here start Send out starting command, it's coming back telling me that it's running now. So the feedback contact indicated it's going and you can see that it's turned green in color. The other thing we need to do is we need to make sure that we're doing enough cooling up on the rooftop coolers. So typically for overnight, we leave the coolant flow at 500 liters a minute. And then any time that we're going to actually operate, we'll click on that. And I'm gonna take that up to 2000 liters a minute. And so you can see the VFD starting to pick up speed. It just went up to 85%, 90%, probably going to hit 100. And then the flow is going to come up. You can see it climbing. It's now at 1,000, 1,200, 1,300. And as it begins to approach the 2,000, you see it's cutting its output back. And then now that we're over 2,000, it's down at 75%. And you can see that it's going to be running somewhere in that 70 to 80 percent region uh, so that we maintain 2,000 liters a minute of coolant going up to the rooftop coolers and then they'll be coming back down into the glycol storage tank which is located at the front of the lab when you first walk in. Okay. Feed water. You'll see that our feed water um, the aerator is full of feed water right now. The pump is running and we've got about 2,070 kilopascal pressure. What I want to do now is start up that condensate pump number one that I opened up the valves for. So I'm going to start him. And again, command went out to start. Feedback says I'm running. And then what we're going to do is this controller is in auto and he will automatically add water if he needs to to this deaerator if, or to a hot well. And similarly, uh, the the aerator level is in auto. He will take water from the hot well if he needs it. Right now he's got lots of water in him. He's actually up at the overflow because this is Monday and the unit, the plant was down Saturday and Sunday and so we have auxiliary steam in there to keep him warm and as a result the steam was condensing and was filling it up. You can see the temperature at the outlet of the deaerator is already at 107 degrees C, and that's what the electric motors did. They kept it warm over the weekend 
to minimize corrosion problems with it and also to minimize um, stress on the metal as you're heating up and cooling down. Now we're going to go to the steam page. We're going to take a look at a detail of the steam page. So coming over, we want to make sure this controller, which is taking the steam from that header and putting it into the 1035 header, for startup purposes, we go to manual and we typically set that to 50%. And you'll see that when it comes down, these valves up here are gonna start moving. They went to 35 and 45. They're actually split range uh, valves that are in there. Um, they almost match one another. It was done for noise reasons. The neither one of these valves have got an equal percent trim in or whisper trim in it. Um, they just have straight equal percent. And we intentionally did this to prove that noise actually is created from about 70% travel up to 100% travel. There's very little noise down at the bottom. Uh, all the rest of our valves are all whisper trims. Um, next thing we've got is a control valve down here, which is wide open so that when any steam does come down through this header, it will head over to the load condenser and be condensed. So the load condenser is simulating our process plant load we got to have somewhere for the steam to go uh, as we start warming these headers up which is going to be fairly soon so let's go look at the boiler and on the boiler page we're already up to 740 kpa inside the drum now over here at the header it's nothing because the valves are closed so now what we're going to do is we're going to open up some warming valves and start warming up the steam headers okay here we are at the steam header. The main valve coming from the boiler is shut off. These valves have got bypasses around them. There's a three quarter inch bypass valve that we use for warming the headers up. So going around behind the header. The valves actually look like this. This is not the one I'm gonna open. But this is a drain valve to take any condensate that might be here and drain it because you don't want it going back into a hot header. And this is the bypass warm-up valve. Okay, so you can see that it, it's actually bypassing the main valve, which is right there. So now I'm gonna go back over to the basket the boiler one, and I'm gonna open up the drain. I'll get water to start with. Water coming out of there. That's all the water that's sitting in the header, in the, last, in the, in the line. And the last thing you want is for that water to be going into the, into the header, particularly if it was hot. So this is going to blow out of here, and then you're going to see steam coming. So we got rid of all the water. And now I'm going to open up the bypass valve. And if you can hear, there's a hammering in the background. That's that non-return valve starting to flap as we start taking steam out of the boiler drum. The next thing we want to do is make sure that we get rid of all the water that might be in there. So down at the bottom, there's a drain right here where the condensate comes out the end of the header comes through a trap and then goes back into the constant return system. We've got a drain valve wide open or open right now and I'm just going to check it carefully with my hand and right now it's stone cold but it won't take very long at all and it's going to get very hot. It's starting to warm a little bit right now. It's maybe going to be 30 seconds and it's getting too hot to hang on to, which means that we've got very hot water or actual steam coming out of here. And so that we've now got rid of most, the majority of the condensate that was in there, I'm going to close this valve off and let the trap do its job and take the condensate away. The drain open here to about the, 100, uh, the 1035 header or 150 psi header. Um, and it's going to sewer right down there. You can see the water turning out of the I'm going to go back along the line a bit. I'm going to 
open up this valve to the deaerator, and I don't have to go through the process of warming the line if, if I do this while it's got no pressure in it. Any condensate that was in there will simply go out and out that drain. Typically what I do is I, I want to see whether once this header gets hot, okay, then I'll start expecting steam to come over to the next header. But one of the ways to check it is that there's a, a, a throttling calorimeter takeoff here and uh, right now it's, it's room temperature, it's cold. But it'll get hot once the steam comes in. You might also notice on the headers themselves, this header is actually sitting on a roller on this end. Out at the far end, it's sitting on an I-beam. In case you see the roller there, you see the I-beam there. So what's going to happen is the header is going to peg at that end and it's going to grow this way. They actually expand as you increase the temperature on them, as you get steam in them. So this, you're not really going to see the roller move. It's only going to move a few thou, but you have to allow for that expansion. And so, Let's say this is cold right now, but once it gets hot, this thing is going to move out maybe five, ten thou of an inch. Okay. Over on our load condenser here, steam is going to come out of the hot of the 1035 header through this valve. And that valve is just starting to get warm. Okay. That steam is going to go up, down a long line, and finally come back into the end of this load condenser. Back, the load condenser is full of air, and the lines are full of air. So what we do is we have a vent located up on the top, and you may not be able to hear it, but I can hear the air coming out of there right now. I'll close the valve, and then listen again, and hear the air coming out. And we're going to let this thing blow all the air out of there, and it's a lot of air. And if we don't do that, the condenser won't work. Nothing will work. Uh, if we didn't take the air out, we could probably condense maybe 2,000 kilograms of steam, um, which is about 1,000 pounds an hour. And this thing is designed for 23,000 pounds an hour. So we don't get the air out. Basically, this whole end is stuck with air. Now, I can see that there's a lot of steam starting to come up from my drain down here. So that means that I've got to have got rid of the water that's in here, so I'm going to close this drain valve. When you go to open these valves, you just you don't wheel them open. It's loose and then it's going to hit the seat again. You can actually hear a change in noise, and that's because the steam's going through here instead of the bypass valve. Now what I do is I watch the pressure gauges. My incoming pressure is running at about 120, and the pressure in the header itself is slowly climbing from zero. It's now up to about 35. And you stay here and watch that game I'm going to do a couple of things. 50. Going up. very close to what the pressure is up on the incoming and so now I'm going to just basically spin this thing open and it gets very easy to move because there's not much differential across it anymore so the spin open relatively easy. You open it wide open
Then I'm going to go around the back and close the bypass valve. So now we've got the air out of the load connector and the steam line. You can see the steam blast. I'm going to throttle the valve down to just a whisper. So I just got a little whisper coming out of there. And that will get rid of any air that might have been still left in the line. Trouble. We'll let it leak all the time. Okay, so now I'm going to go to the steam page. Oh, before I do that, I'm going to go to the water, to the drum level control. I'm going to set it set point for zero right now, which is mid drum, and I'm going to put him on automatic. And right now it's down at minus three centimeters, minus 2.8. It'll start adding water. You can see down here that the water valve is opening, and there's an increasing water flow, feed water flow going into the boiler. So it's drawing it from the deaerator and putting it into the boiler. So the next thing we're going to look at is the steam headers. And uh, coming off of the 1725, it's up at 400 kPa now. Um, you can see that there's some steam coming down through here, which I'll talk about in a moment. Steam comes through these two valves into this header. He's up at 190 kPa. And then from there, it's going down through this control valve, which is an automatic. It was wide open and it's throttling back now. You can see it 50, 49, 48. Uh, to try and bring this pressure back down to set point. So in PSI terms, the 1725 header is 250 PSI, the 1035 header is 150 PSI, and this line down here at 103.5 kPa is 15 PSI. So we're stepping from 250 to 150 to 15. Um, now, the uh, as the steam comes up, I'm eventually going to have to get going on controlling this um, 150 header and then what he'll do is he'll throttle these valves up and down as necessary to maintain um, uh, a constant pressure on that header. I'm going to go back to the feed water page just to make sure things are okay. Uh, our deaerator pressure, we need to start drawing some steam. We opened up the steam valve on that uh, 150 header and so now what I need to do is put this on control uh, normally you would open it slowly, but in fact we're down at low pressures right now, so I'm just going to put it in auto. And what we did, you'll see that because the pressure is below set point, set point's at 48, the pressure's only at 28, um, the valve is opening. We've limited the valve so that it won't open anything more than 50%. Normally it's running somewhere around 5-10%, but uh, for startup obviously everything is cooler than normal. And so it's going to have to open up a fair amount. Um, the uh, limiting, if I just open that up and move over to this display here, you can see that the high output limit is set at 50. And the only person that can change that has to have administrative privileges. So we've limited it for safety reasons, so it never goes wide open, and it never needs to. Okay, so that's on automatic. This is on automatic. This is on automatic. Feed water pressure is on automatic. So there's the feed water coming out and it's going through this letdown valve back into here to maintain that pressure at 2068 kilopascal. Now I'm going to go back to the steam page and you'll see this pressure is climbing, not very fast. So we want to speed this whole process up a little bit. And the boiler's been firing for a while. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take this plant master controller and I'm going to change its output from 20 or from 10 to 20 percent. When I do, this is a cross limited combustion control system. The air, which is up here, is going to lead. So right now he's got a set point of 9 percent on there and this guy's got a set point of 9 percent and the output of the boiler master is at 9 when this guy's at 10. As soon as I change this to 20, 20, that guy goes to 20. This guy's starting to move. You can see the set point on the airflow moving, and then as the airflow itself comes up, it raises the set point on the gas flow. So the fuel follows the air on the way up, and on the way down, the fuel will lead the air. 
Um, and so now the firing rate is going to increase, so we're putting a, a higher fire in there. Uh, one of the things I forgot to mention earlier in this video is that uh, we have what is called a release for modulation. So the burner management panel has actually got a green flag up on it right now, which says that we were up over the 105 degrees C uh, temperature of the flue gas, so therefore it has now released us to modulate, so we can actually change the firing rate on the boiler. Previously, this was in LO, local override, and these guys were in uh, local override. Why are they still low? Oh, I know, cascade. I'm in cascade on the gas, and I'm in cascade on the air, and I'm in cascade on the flue gas recirculation. Uh, the oil, we're not firing oil, is in local override. Okay, so the, I'm gonna, this is all sort of settled out. This guy's at 17.4, the air's at 17.4, this is 17.4, the gas is coming up a little bit. Um, we're still running with high excess air because the air led the fuel on the way up. I'm gonna push this guy up to 30 now. So I'm gonna give him 30%. And again, you'll see the air is leading. It's 20.5, when this guy was only at 18.9. Um, and so we'll raise this firing rate up. And our water level has actually climbed up on us. And what it's doing is that the water in the drum is expanding due to the fact that we're increasing the firing rate. Uh, so it's actually throttled the feed water valve back to nothing uh, for right now because we're still 1.3 centimeters above what my set point value is. Okay, back to the steam page. We are up at 400 kPa. Realize we got to go all the way to 1725. Um, and this is still down low. It's only at 365, and that's why I'm taking the firing rate up. Probably going to go back to the boiler page, take one more look at it. Um, the output of the boiler master is at 26. This guy, for all intents and purposes, is at 26, and this one is at 25. So I'm going to push this once more, one more step. I'll take it to 40. And if the boiler was really cold, you wouldn't do this. But remember, this boiler's got a, a hot standby system on it, so it would be kept hot all night, uh, all weekend, for that matter. And um, so it's not a problem to push this up as we are doing. We're not doing any harm to the boiler at all. Um, the water walls are taking the heat away, so there's no sudden thermal shock to the tubes or anything like that. You can see the O2 level is dropping a little tiny bit, and it will go down more and more and more as we go up. And also as the boiler gets hotter. I'm going to clear those alarms off. Pressure is climbing significantly in this header, so now what I've got to do is I've got to drop, drop that valve, so I'm going to take it down to 40%. You see the pressure is up at 1035, which is 150 psi. I've dropped the valve to 40, and now the pressure is not doing very much, so I'm going to take it down to 30. And now I'm going to take it down to 25. I'm getting a high alarm on here, which is going to indicate that I'm going to lift the safety pretty quick if I don't get down faster. That was a safety, yeah. It's okay, you guys are changing those out anyway. It's coming up fast. Okay, I'm going to go back to the 
1035 header. And I'm going to put this controller, the load condenser on automatic, which will raise the amount of steam that we're consuming. So it's right now at a thousand and it's going to go up to, or it's at 630 and I want to go to a set point of a thousand. See that our header pressure is still, well, it's not bad. This is slow to react, it always will be. The valve is opened up to 13%. The flow is up at 4,000 kilograms an hour of coolant going through there. Okay, so now we've gone through a complete startup of the boiler and all the ancillary systems. We brought the plant up, got it online, and we could either be using the steam for uh, running our processes or we could be doing combustion testing on it or a variety of different things.